there. This is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I am your host, Nina Perez, and we are here to discuss life topics to challenge and transform your thinking. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Nina Perez and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Thank you so much for being here. This show is created to discuss life topics to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. And today I have Sylvester Long here. He is a 27-year-old motivational speaker, an author, a musician, and a former athlete. And he is helping others by turning their pain into purpose through sharing his story. He has a book, called Out of Pain and Into Purpose. And we are so glad that he is here so we can talk to him about what that is and what he has been through so he can share and impact your life. So Sylvester, thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. It's just an honor to be here. Thank you so much, Sylvester. It's really an honor to have you. And I want to get into like, because you do a lot of things. You're a motivational speaker, an author, musician, a former athlete, all this great stuff. But before we do all of that, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself? I just gave a little bio, but I want to hear more about you. Yeah, sure. Um, So I'm born and raised in Columbus, Georgia. I'm still in the area right now. Um, I recently uh, graduated with my master's degree. Um, in sports management from Georgetown in DC. And um, overall for me, I'm just a pretty chill person who really likes to have a good time, um, spread good vibes and hang around good vibes as well and spread all kinds of love around no matter what it looks like. Because for me, uh, spreading love for me is the way to go. You know, spread Mm. kindness, spread love, not hate, you know. And of course, spread kindness and love, not COVID of course. So, um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you have to say that now, right? <laughs> so funny. So funny. That is so funny. Um, that's good. And you know, and you're right, Sylvester. I think it's something that we are missing a lot of, right? Because mm. nowadays it just feels like sometimes things are so heavy, right? Yeah. Topics are so heavy, conversations are so heavy, and um, you know, people are trying to out, you know, outbeat each other and out whatever yeah. each other, and the news is like, ah. So it is good that you have that message within you to share, um, to share love and joy and all of that. And that's fantastic. I did want to talk to you about your uh, past, where you've been, uh, Mm -hmm. because you you are using that as your platform to impact somebody's life, right? So tell us a little bit about your, your, you know, what you've gone through. Yeah. Um, So growing up, I've dealt with a lot and I'm just 27 years old. So I was bullied at a young age, um, going through depression and suicidal thoughts as well, Mm -hmm. and also battle and continuously battling dyslexia as well. So that was really hard for me. And listening to what others had to say about me, it got to the point where I started thinking those things about myself. You know, I started hating who I was, you know, because people were saying I was geeky, I was nerdy, I was ugly, all sorts of different things that you can think of, you know, and at points in time, I literally thought that about myself as like, am I really like this? Am I really ugly? Am I really nerdy? Like, will I ever be loved? All kinds of questions like Mm -hmm. that popped in my head. And when it got to middle school, it got so bad to the point where suicide attempts um, happened three different times. And um, it was like, I couldn't take it no more. You know, it's like, what's the point of living? What's the point of being here if all I'm doing is causing so much pain or whatever for other people to laugh at, to make fun of and stuff. And I wasn't even doing anything. I did what I could to be as much of a nice guy as possible, but people still wanted to talk about me. So in each of those attempts, you know, uh, my mom stopped me, you know, was wondering what was going on with me. And I told her I was going in a downward spiral. I was just like, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to feel at that moment. I was dealing with so much. I was like, I can't take it no more. I can't do this no more. It's no point in me living anymore. What's the Mm -hmm. point if I'm just going to be a burden on everybody? Um, And she had to really help me understand that um, it doesn't matter what people say about you, good or bad. People are going to talk at the end of the day. You know, the only thing that matters is what you think of yourself, you know, and what God thinks of you when he looks at you. So, and I'm a firm believer in God. I'm a Christian and and I've um, learned for years and years on how to love myself really because I really hated myself. So it took me so many years to understand what self-love meant, what confidence meant, self-esteem, all sorts of different things to really get to the point where it's like, I don't care what people got to say about me because I love who I am at the end of the day. I was created this way for a reason. And I always tell people, 
Can't nobody do you better than you. Can't nobody be you better than you. So instead of trying to be somebody else, you might as well just be you at the end of the day and be the best you that you could possibly be. And I've had to learn that and I've ingrained that in my head ever since then. And it's been a constant battle, but daily is a daily work in progress for me with self-love because I know it's not going to happen overnight. Um, it's always a daily thing for me because if I could change my mindset, I could change my vocabulary, I could change my habits and I could change my lifestyle for the better. Right. That's really powerful. That is really powerful. And it's something that a lot of people do struggle with a lot, right? Especially yeah. youth. I mean, there's bullying can be so, so hard and so mm -hmm. serious and heavy, right? Yeah. Because um, sometimes you feel like you can't even get away from it, you know? Yeah. And now it's even, I think, worse because now not only are they in school with you, but they're on social media with you. Yeah. They're, you know, they're, they're in your online classes with you. They're on your email with you. I mean, yeah. you know, bullying is a serious thing. My oldest son went through some serious bullying as well. Same, you know, same, almost the same story where he, you know, had some attempts and in, in thoughts and stuff, things like that. And yeah. it's a very, very difficult thing to overcome. Mm -hmm. I am very grateful to God that you did not succeed. <laughs> uh, because I think you're, you're amazing. Right. And, and I was looking at your platform and you have really great content on there and you're very, um, inspirational and, um, you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God that you were not successful, you know? So thank you for being here with me because now this makes this moment even more special to me. Um, so Sylvester, you also, do you take that message then? And are you sharing that with the youth? Is that what you're doing? Like when you say you're a motivational speaker, are you sharing that in that kind of platform? Yeah, because um, I love talking to kids. I love talking to kids and I go to different schools in my area and talk to them. Um, I tell them about what I've been through. Be like, I know where you've been at in school. I know exactly where you're coming from, especially if you're an athlete. I know what it's like, the struggles of being an athlete, trying to combat, playing on the court, on the field, trying to balance your studies and other things that you're trying to do. I know exactly where you're coming from, especially with college students. Because right. I resonate so much with college students because I've been there, you know, I did everything in college, you know, athlete, organizations, fraternity, all sorts of different things that I did and trying to back, trying to juggle everything. And it was so hard, you know, so, um, but I managed to get through it, you know, with the help of God, because if it wasn't for him, honestly, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so I love talking to kids. I love talking to students and I love talking to people in the church as well, you know, Christians and other believers. Um, because um, I'm a firm believer in that everything that has happened to me, it happens for me for a reason. You know, right. I had to have it in this specific order to get to me, to get me to where I am, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just so important for me to remind myself of that as I keep going in life and not to give up and not to wave that white flag and surrender because it's so easy for us to give up. It's so easy for us to just quit. The hardest thing is to always keep going, but that's mm -hmm. where the blessing is going to come. And that's where the strength is going to come. That's where you're going to see so many victories, so many triumphs is in you never giving up. So that way you can go from a test to a testimony or go from a mess to a message, you know, or going from pain to power, all sorts of different things like that. Right, right. right. Did, did, um, did okay, you became an athlete? Were you an athlete in middle school or was that something you started to, okay, you did. Yeah, I was it an was athlete through middle school. Mm -hmm. When you were an athlete in middle school, um, was that during the bullying as well? Or did you did, did, did being an athlete kind of get you out of that mindset of, um, you know, you said you wanted um, to. Well, for me, um, yeah, oh, go ahead. it kind of um, started uh, when I got into athletics in middle school. It kind of like helped me get one, get out of my comfort zone, you know, because um, I was always to myself for the most part, and I was kind of doing my own thing and stuff, but it really helped me step out of my comfort zone. So it was like little bit by little bit, it was helping, helping me gain more confidence, you know, just being out there, you mm -hmm. know, and just doing things, whether you're playing football, running track, doing clubs, whatever the case may be. It helped out a little bit, a little bit. And when high school came, it started to develop more and more and more because I did athletics in high school as well, um, other clubs and stuff, and really getting to know other people. You know, and really starting to, at that moment, it was still hard, but I was also, in a way, better understanding what it meant to love myself and really just accept me for me at the end of the day. And right. when college came, that was really the climax, really. You know, it's like, that's when I really hit my stride, you know, of this is me. I'm going to do me at the end of the day. I don't care what nobody got to say about it. You know, you could love me, hate me. I'm just going to do me at the end of the day. So doing this, athletics and college as well, organizations, president of organizations in my fraternity, 
um, doing different things and just, it's really helped. So me getting out of my comfort zone by doing that in middle school has really helped build my confidence, you know, because right. if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for God allowing me to do that, I'd still be, you know, shy. I'd still be in my own comfort zone, in my shell, at least not knowing, not seeing the different possibilities of the world that's out there, you know, if I did step out of my comfort zone or at least expand my comfort zone. In a sense. Right. And, you know, there's something powerful to be said here because, you know, when you think about what you went through and I, and, you know, um, mental health is a, is a real thing, right? Like when we, yeah. when we struggle, we're going through that dark place. That is really, really how you feel. You really yeah. feel like there is no out. I, I tried to commit suicide when I was 13. So mm. I remember that. And I remember how hard that was um, yeah. and how much I just wanted it to end. I just wanted it to end, you know? Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. I'm so grateful though, to hear your voice. And I'm grateful that you're sharing that voice. Because Sylvester, you know, people need to know that there's a tomorrow. Yeah. People need to know there's a tomorrow, right? Yes. Because um, sometimes we don't feel like there is. And, and being that you've been in that place, you know what I'm talking about. Like there really feels like there's no tomorrow. Like this is it, you know, yeah. like this is the darkest it's going to be and that's it, you know, but yeah. there is a tomorrow and you do rise up, right? And you do get through it and it actually makes you stronger than you ever thought you were. Yes. Right. It makes you become a, you know, kick ass type person like you can yeah. get this done, you yeah. know, and um, and I'm really proud of you for that, because you also mentioned that you were dyslexic. Right. I'm slightly dyslexic, too. So I get the challenge. Um, I get how hard it is when you got to look at something 50 times to try to make sure you spelled it right. You know, yeah. um, and I actually write everything down as well, because as I was growing up, I always I knew that I always had a little bit of ADD as well. So mm. that was also a challenge. Um, yeah. But it's just made me better, stronger, wiser. You know, it yeah. just it just does. Right. And and now yeah. we're in a place where you can record things now instead of having to write them down. True. You know, you can dictate so that your computer does it for you. Thank goodness. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a, there's ways around this. So I guess what I'm trying to say is for those who are listening, who think that they can't write a book or that they can't, you know, um, uh, write the notes to a, a song or, you know, whatever. Yes, you can. You absolutely can you yes. know, and you can get through the darkest times. I promise you the sun will rise tomorrow, yes. right? The sun will rise tomorrow. And so you were also talking about, um, the, you also said that you were a musician. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you do? What are you into? I'm a drummer. I've been playing since middle oh, school, cool. actually, since before that, actually, I've been playing for about 18 years, actually, um, playing drums. I did drums in middle school and high school. I was on the drum line, a, a section leader and drum so major. Uh, I love it. It's a lot of fun for me playing different beats and just being able to come up with things on my own, Come having a creative side of me, just think of things that just uh, come up with and stuff, different cadences, different beats and stuff. So it's a lot of fun for me. And um, it's like a hobby for me because mm -hmm. at one point I was like, maybe I should do this full time. And I was like, you know what? This is one of the things that's just like a hobby for me, you know, because mm -hmm. I love it so much that it, it doesn't matter if I get paid to do it or not. I just love doing it. You know, it's, it's always fun for me. It's fun for right. me because I enjoy myself. It's like, I'm just in my element. I'm in my zone. Like once I'm getting into a beat, you just like, you can't stop me. So right. that's so it. good. That's so good. Do you play for the church as well or? Yeah, I play for a number of churches in the area, um, in my city, as well as um, in Phoenix City across the way um, and for different groups, uh, play for a couple of gospel groups. And I even play other things outside of, uh, co Christian contemporary music. I play like jazz cause I'm a huge jazz fanatic. Oh, that's uh, cool. I play mm -hmm. jazz music. Uh, I love playing all different kinds of genres cause for the most part I play by ear. Uh, I know how to read music, but for the most part I play by ear. So if mm -hmm. I hear a beat and I try to mimic that, I'll just instantly mimic it just like that. So, it's like a so. natural, it's like a natural gift. Yeah, it's, and the yeah. funny thing is, when I first got into it, I really didn't know what to expect when I first got into drums. I was like, I don't know if I'm good, but it's worth a try. And it was like I didn't take lessons. You know, it just it just came to me, and I didn't take lessons. I was like, that's nothing but God because He gave me that uh, gift for a reason. You know, and I was like, I'm not gonna take that for granted. So right. I, I just love it. And it's been a good 18 years, and I enjoy it, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. So. <laughs> 
Right. No, that's great. And I mean, it's it's pretty um, impressive, too, because you started by saying that people were always like teasing you and bothering you in school because you were a nerd, too. Right. Yeah. So you're a nerd who's an athlete, who's a musician. So you're like using <laughs> yeah. both sides of your brain here. Yeah. That's amazing. So tell me about um, tell me about your book. So when did you come out with this book and what's the message in this book? Yeah, um, my book, I recently had, I published my book, self-published it at the beginning of this year, actually. Good um, for you. And uh, it took a couple of years to write because I really didn't know what I wanted to write about. I knew mm-hmm. I wanted to write a book because my grandfather, God rest his soul, he was a pastor, he was a bishop, and he was a speaker. And um, he wrote two books um, at the time. And I knew, I, I, looked, I looked at everything that he did. I looked at how he operated, how he spoke to people, how he helped people. And I wanted to be just like him in that aspect because I love helping people. And I get that from him and my mom. I get that from both of them because I have such a heart for helping people. And it's like, I consider myself a servant leader because I want to lead by example, by serving yeah. others. Yeah. And, um, and I've been doing that for a long time and I love helping people, you know, and I love being able to help somebody because if I can help at least one person, even if it's just one person, then I'm doing something right. And that's how I look at it. And uh, with my book, it took a while to uh, figure out what I wanted to write, but I really wanted to share my story. So I literally just poured my heart out into this book of just talking about my experiences, things that I never thought I'd even talk about to people you know mm-hmm. I'm saying, you know what somebody has to know what's going on what I've been through and how I got to where I am and where I want to go so um so it, I recently had self-published it at the beginning of the year and um it's on Amazon it is on Amazon for the Kindle ebook version as well as a paperback copy version of the book which I have in my hand right here That's uh, so great. Uh, it's my very first book and I guarantee you it certainly won't be the last um I don't know when I'll write the next one, but just know that I will. Pl- I do plan on writing another one because this was so enjoyable for me. And the message that I want people to um, get from this book is that the pain that we experience, it's, it, it sucks. It completely does suck. Um, I wouldn't wish <laughs> on anybody, um, but it's temporary. You know, it's a temporary mm-hmm. sensation. It's a temporary feeling that pain doesn't last always. You know, trouble don't last always. And um, there's always a purpose behind it. There's always a purpose behind the pain that we experience, you know, and it's there to build us up and to make us stronger, even though it may look like it's trying to tear us down and break us. It's there to mold us. It's there to shape Mm -hmm. us, to be better, become stronger, wiser, just just to be better, better, better us, you know, at the end of the day. And um, I love it because I'm all about pain and the purpose, turning pain into power, going from a mess to a message, going from a test to a testimony, going from a battle to a blessing. Because without without trials, we wouldn't know what a triumph looks like. You know, without battles, we wouldn't know what blessings looks like. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for uh, being a victim in some way, shape, or fashion, we wouldn't know what a victory looks like. You know, so without, without failure, we wouldn't know what success looks like. Mm-hmm. And I know growing up, I've had fear of failure. You know, I've had mm-hmm. fear of failing because I was a perfectionist. And in some ways, I still am. But um, I was a perfectionist. I wanted everything to go the way I wanted it to. And in life, it's not always going to be the way it is. You know, mm-hmm. some things work. Some things may work out. Other things may not work out the way you want it to. And it's just a part of life. It's about learning what you got from it and moving on. You know, and failure is a part of life. You know, I'd rather I'd rather work until failure. You know, than to just quit when I fail the first time. Because at least I'm trying, at least I'm trying to keep going because I could get a bunch of no's. I can get like 99 no's. But if all it takes is that one yes, That's all it takes. change your life for the better. All it takes mm-hmm. is that one yes. You may get a bunch of no's. You may get a bunch of rejections because I am a pro at getting rejected a lot of a number of things. <laughs> but um, all it takes is that one yes to change your life for the better, to change your mindset, to be like, hey, I didn't give up. I decided to keep going and I want you to do the same. And I want others to do the same just by sharing my story or my unique life experiences and what a friend of mine calls it. Um, and just let others know that if I can get through it, so can you. If I can push past the pain into my purpose, you can do the same for yourself. Right. That's so good. And you just dropped so many gems there. So um, 
you know, the, you know, the truth is, is that, you know, fear to me or failure, excuse me, failure to me is feedback, right? Failure yeah. is feedback. All it does is it tells you how to do things better the next time. Right. Fear to me is, um, I use it as an acronym, right? It's uh, facing and eliminating all restrictions. Ooh. So every time you're in fear, it's like, I'm going to face it. I'm going to eliminate it. You know, and I'm going to make sure that all of the restrictions that are stopping me from moving forward because of fear, that's going to stop. You know, so it's facing and eliminating all restrictions. And the truth be told is um, I, you know, I'm also a believer, um, a very strong believer. I love the Lord. And I know for me, me, you know, moving forward and doing the things I do in my life and impacting, because I always say I only need to impact the life of one. So that's why it it like rung with me when you said it. I'm like, yeah, okay. That's what I say all the time. Um, um, I realized that that anchor for me was super important. Do you feel like your faith is what anchors you right now to everything that you're doing? Yes, it honestly is for me because um, I, and I said it earlier, if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him waking me up, allowing me to do the things that I do, I wouldn't be able to do half the things or a lot mm-hmm. of the things that I do, you know, uh, being able to write this book, which is a huge accomplishment for me, being able to graduate with not just one degree, but two degrees, um, being able to uh, go for athletics, be able to join my fraternity, be able to do different things and help my community, you know, and my faith in God and I trusting in him and knowing that everything happens for a reason and trust in the process, you know, because a lot of people can focus on the prize and what's at the end, you know, and I'm like, I know you want to focus on the prize. You want to focus on what's at the end of the tunnel. But while you're focusing on the end, you're missing what's in the middle of it. You're missing what's in the process, you know, because sometimes you got to stop and take a breather. Sometimes you got to pause and enjoy the moment, you know, enjoy the fact that one, you're in the middle of doing something that you want to do. You're trying to get to where you want to go to. And I know you want to get there. And sometimes I know I've had at one point in time, I wanted to rush trying to get there. But I was like, my timing doesn't match his timing. You know, his timing is on the truth, you know, because I I, I could be like, I want it right now, but it ain't going to happen right now. So um, it'll happen when the time is right. And when the time is right, you'll know it yeah. and you'll feel it. And, you know, you'll get confirmation that that time is coming or that time is now. So whether it be signs through random strangers or signs of things that you see, you'll get signs of confirmations in some way, shape, form, or fashion. You just yeah. got to be able to listen and align, and align yourself. That's the biggest thing is aligning yourself. If you can align yourself with your purpose, with your vision, it may not be the way you want it to, or you, it may not come to fruition if you don't align yourself, you know? Right. So that's right. my biggest thing. My faith in God really anchors me. It really drives me. It really pushes me to do things because even when things fail, even when things don't work out the way I want it to, I trust the fact that he'll work something out. I trust that he'll open another door because the word no can be next opportunity. Right. That opportunity may not be for me right now, but there's another opportunity that is more suited for me, you know? So I may look at that Noah's next opportunity um, because it'd be like, okay, that may not have worked out right now, but that's okay because there's always something better out there because there's always something better out there for us. Even if something doesn't work out for us, you just got to keep going, you know, and that's what I look at as genuine optimism, you know, versus toxic positivity, you know, um, when it comes to say that again, say that again, (laughs) say that again, optimism versus toxic positivity, you know, you can be positive, but in a toxic way, because um, you'd be like, uh, stay up or whatever the case may be, stay positive, which is all well and good, but you're also negating how that person's feeling at the moment. You're negating how they're feeling, what they're going through and stuff. And that's something so you don't sad. ever want to do versus genuine optimism. You're optimistic about the future, but you're genuine in the fact that it's not always going to be easy. The road is not always going to be easy. The road ain't always straight. There's always going to be detour. There's always going to be a uh, pace. It's always going to be speed bumps, right. uh, mm-hmm. hills or anything. It's all about just staying focused you know focus forward you know you have to ask yourself where your where does your focus lie you know and i use focus as an acronym and i uh, a friend uh, someone had told me this acronym uh the f stands for first things first you got to prioritize prioritize yourself what's most important to you you got to put that first you know and most and him he's my priority um o is other things second anything that's not of a priority put it to the side put it to the <laughs> side it's not important it is not important which brings me to the letter C, cut out the unimportant. (laughs) Cut out anything that's not important that does not even involve your purpose, cut it out. Whether it be people, whether it be things that you may feel like should be a part of your purpose, but they're really not. 
you know, um, and you is unifying yourself with the vision, just aligning yourself with your vision, your purpose, aligning yourself and staying aligned. And, you know, it's a daily process with that. And S is sticking to it. So you have first things first, other things second. Mm-hmm. Cut out the unimportant. Unify yourself with the vision and stick to it. As long as you stick to it, as long as you keep your focus where it should be, everything will work out. And you, you'll get everything that your heart desires and more if you stay focused and you align yourself. Yep. And I think that, you know, um, well, I'm a believer. So of course I, I, I think that he is, you know, the ultimate and, you know, we really do need to have him on focus first because it's, yes. it, that's what I try to do in my life. Anyway, mm-hmm. I try to do that in my life. Um, not always getting it right, mm-hmm. you know, but I always tell people, if you're going to tell me that God ain't real, you came too late. You came too yeah. late, you know, yeah. <laughs> just came <Yeah>. too late. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those, 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 you know, I've had people say, oh, do you, you really believe in God? Yeah. Oh, I don't believe in God. Well, you trying to tell me that you, you just came too late. There's just way too much evidence of the Lord in my life. Right. For me to deny that the Lord is the Lord. It's just right. Too much. It's just way too much evidence. You know what I'm right. saying? I mean, exactly. You know, um, and even like uh, even even in life experiences as well, like a, the evidence in my life experiences will blow people's mind. And it's all God. It's all yes. God, right? Yes. And then, and there's also just evidence, like historical evidence. There's mm-hmm. all kinds. There's just a lot of evidence. So, yeah. I say all that to say that it was such a blessing that you had a mother who was in faith when you were going through the dark times that you were going through, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because she was able to identify and see that something was wrong with her baby, right? Mm-hmm. And was also able to help you through, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that I'm sure that that had a lot to do with you having this faith as well. Um, your mother, but also your grandfather, right? Yes, having that surrounding. Sure. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. My mom, she is a strong believer. If anything, my mom is actually an elder in the church, actually. She's a minister, elder in the church. Um, so she definitely played a huge role in my belief and helping me believe, um, as well as my grandfather, because, um, like I said, he was a pastor and he pastored in different places all around the country um and even preached at a lot of churches and stuff and a lot of people knew who he was especially in my community a lot of people knew who he was and for what he did and I say he was a humanitarian because he cared about people not just the people in the church but he cared about people in this community like I'll never forget one time uh he had told me someone in the middle of the night called him and they, and they lived in, they lived in Alabama like I think Birmingham and they had called him saying that something was wrong he wasn't feeling well he got up in the middle of the night and literally drove to Birmingham to see about who to see about that person and to check on and pray with him and stuff. And in my head, I was thinking at the time, I was like, you better than me. It's this middle of the night. You better than me. But, <laughs> but I was like, I get why he did that because he had a heart for people, you know. And um, one thing I also learned when it comes to helping people, um, you can only help people who want to be helped because there are people out here who don't want to be helped. You know, you can try to help them as much as possible, but there are people who may not want to be helped. And I'm like, that's okay. You know what? That's okay. You know, yeah. send them yeah. a lot of, send them love, send them love and light regardless and move on. So. Yeah, no, you, and you really, you're right because, um, and they might come to, to a point in their yeah. life where they'll, they'll want that help later. Right. Um, exactly. Sylvester. Right. And this is important also to bring up because, because you're a motivational speaker, because you have your book out, because you're doing what you're doing for you as well, for mm-hmm. you as well, you have to remember that, right? Yeah. Because when somebody doesn't do what you know is the right thing for them to do or take your advice or, you know, whatever, yeah. you have to be okay to say, okay, I can't help everybody. Right. Right. Because it, as a, as a, cause I help a lot of people where I'm a coach and stuff like that. And when you're trying to help people and they don't want to be helped, it almost falls back on you. You're almost like, Dang, yeah, what am I doing wrong? Right. Yeah. So you got to keep that in mind always, because otherwise yeah. you, you yourself will beat yourself up on that one. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm a pro at beating myself up on a lot of things. So. Yeah. <laughs> most of us. Yeah. See, yeah. most of us are. Yeah, That's why we have to crazy. be careful. Yeah, we really yeah. are. Yeah. But this was super fun talking to you. You are really uh, full of light and and love. Like you said before, I love your energy. You have amazing energy, Sylvester. And Thank you, you so have much. so many nuggets like, my <laughs> gosh, uh, this is a great interview. So I want you to let my my audience know um, because mm-hmm. my audience is very much about um about 
growing, about transforming, about thinking bigger. I mean, that is what I decided to do a couple of years ago. And this podcast is growing really well. And it's because I decided to pour into others. And so tell my people, tell all of our people listening, how we can get your book, uh, how we can follow you, support what you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Tell us all. Yeah, sure. So my book, Out of Pain and a Purpose, is on Amazon. Uh, you can get the Kindle ebook for $9.99 or my paperback on there for $12.99. So it's on Amazon right now. Um, I'm in the process of doing an audio book. So that way, in case people may not like reading, they can listen to it as well. That's great. Um, as far as social media, I'm on Clubhouse. I am on Clubhouse. My handle is at King Slyman. Um, that is my Clubhouse um, handle. So follow me on Clubhouse for any rooms that I do, including like motivation, uh, vulnerability, anything like that. Uh, Instagram, follow my page, Out of Pain and the Purpose, which is my book. It's my brand. Uh, follow that page as well as my personal page. If you want to get to know me, it's at anointed underscore Black King Drummer. Um, that's my personal page, my Instagram page, my business page is out of pain and the purpose. Um, I'm also on Facebook. I'm also on Facebook as well. So you can follow out of pain and purpose on Facebook as well. And Twitter, my handle is purpose to pain. So okay. um, follow me on all those sites. Um, get to know me, get at me, let's chat, let's chop it up. I love Sylvester, you need a website. I know, right? And I'm working on that. that. You need a website so you can put all of your handles, your book, what you do, your speaking engagements, your music, all that on there. And then you just have that boom, go here and you can get all Sylvester all day long. Good for you. (laughs) Good for you. Thank you for spending and sharing this space with me, Sylvester. It was a real blessing. Thank Thank you. you so much for having me. I enjoyed it. This was great. Good. I'm glad you did. I try to make people feel comfortable. So I'm glad you were here. Thank you. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Thank you. (laughs) And thank you guys so much for listening and being here with us. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you leave a review and share away. Don't forget all of that information that Sylvester just gave you on following him on the different social media handles. I will have show notes on this episode below so you can see everything going on and where to find him. If you guys have any questions, make sure you email me at hello at mem- uh, hello at straight talk, no sugar com. This is Nina Perez at Straight Talk. Until next time. Make sure that you visit our website at Straight Talk No Sugar Added, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes and Stitcher or anywhere you listen to your podcast or on YouTube so you'll never miss a show. And while you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you simply tell a friend about our show, that would be awesome too. If you like this show, you might want to check out our book as well. It's Hit Me With Your Best Shot, How I Overcame a Hard-Hitting Life. I am Nina Perez, and I am here for you. If you are looking for private coaching, make sure that you email me at hello at straighttalknosugaraddit.com. Until next time.